Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me here at Ellie's Digest. I wanted to discuss a few things before we get into the topics at hand and share with you guys a little bit more of an intimate, personal view of myself. Over the years, I've always just shared my creations, what I do, but I never really shared the individual behind the scene, behind the camera, behind the music, behind the film, behind all of it, the food, all of it. I never felt the need to because my focus was always creating. But these last few years, I've focused on personal self-development. And it's been quite the journey. On this segment, I'm going to mostly share matters of the heart and how I navigated through them. And hopefully people like in mind can share theirs back with me. Um, that would be the overall goal, I would think, with Ellie's Digest, you know, to open up the heart, chakra, talk about these experiences and how I found contentment and grew from them. In today's episode, we're going to discuss what is a platonic relationship and why they're important for us to have in our lives. So a a platonic relationship is a bond between two people that's just not sexual. So you could think of a family member, you could think of a best friend, anything in between, a classmate, coworkers. They come in many different forms, shapes, and sizes. The reason these relationships are so important, one, we are social creatures. Humans are social creatures and we are meant to be around each other. Life was never meant to be done alone. We learn from each other when we communicate and we grow. So therefore, these bonds build our network and our net worth. This builds the village. You know how they say it takes a village to raise a child? That village is a community. Those people have bonds and not all of them are sexual. But I think the best way to dive into the depths of a platonic relationship and the importance would to be to revisit something that we learned in grade school because I feel like it's gotten so misconstrued in society and we have left it off the wagon. The seven pillars of character. These are the ethics and morals that our family, parents, and village set us up with when we're young. There were songs about it when we were kids, but sometimes we just need a personal memory jog so we can remind ourselves who we are and who we're meant to be. So we can make getting along with each other a pleasant experience. So let's talk about that. Let's break down the seven pillars of character. On inspirationalife.com, they gave a great breakdown of the seven pillars of character, along with some great quotes that we'll just breeze through because we're all self-aware of what they are. The first is respect. I love this quote by Mr. Monson. When we treat people merely as they are, they will remain as they are. When we treat them as if they were what they should be, they will become what they should be. Thomas S. Monson. Self-awareness. When I discover who I am, I'll be free. Ralph Ellison. Self-awareness gives you the capacity to learn from your mistakes and your successes. It enables you to keep growing. Lawrence Bossidy. Our third pillar of character is self-reliance. You cannot help people permanently do by doing for them what they could and should do for themselves. Abraham Lincoln. I love this quote by Susan B. Anthony. I think the girl who can earn her own living and pay her own way should be as happy as anybody on earth. The sense of independence and security is very sweet. Citizenship 
or environmental concern? This one specifically, I just want to say a little tidbit about, I don't like when I see people throw trash on the street. I'm the type of person to just go pick it up and put it in a trash can if time permits, just because we're all living on this world together. And I feel like it's all our jobs to personally take care of our surroundings and our environment. But here's a few good quotes on this idea. One by Albert Einstein, I found very striking. Concern for man and his fate must always form the chief interest of all technical endeavors. Never forget this in the midst of your diagrams and equations. Another good quote by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It's the only thing that ever has. That quote has so much power to it, too. Like I just said, we have to take care of home. And when you take care of home, you take care of your environment and your surroundings. Everything is connected. Moving along to cooperation. Mother Teresa, none of us, including me, ever do great things. But we can all do small things with great love. And together we can do something wonderful. Napoleon Hill, it is literally true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping others to succeed. This is taking a very cooperative, selfless approach to life, business, character development, getting along with people of different backgrounds and ethnicities, all of those things encompassing making a better life at ease. Six, kindness. I feel like with the current times that we're living in right now and the way society is going back and forth with all these labels and all these judgments and the rise of the sexual revolution, the rise of getting past breaking through this racism, getting through what we have going on in society changing with our finances, going to a different banking system. Everything is changing and coming to a head all at once. And, you know, one thing I could say is what a time to be alive. Constant kindness can accomplish much. As the sun makes ice melt, Kindness causes misunderstanding, mistrust, and hostility to evaporate. Albert Schweitzer. One of the best analogies I've ever heard on kindness, and if it's not the truth, I don't know what is. Last but not least, empowerment. Maya Angelou, I love this quote. Where could you go wrong with her? If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Ralph Waldo Emerson, what lies behind us and what lies before us are small matters compared to what lies within us. Mm. Mike Dooley, the secret to living the life of your dreams is to start living the life of your dreams today in every little possible way you can. That statement in itself is a whole nother topic for another day. But I will say, you have to become the person you were meant to be today. You can't wait until tomorrow. You can't wait until this gets right, until you lose this bit of weight, until your hair gets done, until you get this done or that paid off. You have to do it today. You have to live and be who you are meant to be today. And that's self-empowering in itself. To be able to do that and work through the motions, to avoid the monotony and really find the true self. That takes time. It takes effort. And it's not going to happen in one day, but it will happen each day over time until one day you look back at yourself, you're a completely different person. This is the part in the episode where I'm going to share more tea about myself and let you in on a more personal level of who I am and where I'm going and who I'm becoming. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'm able to be here and talk about this because I started taking therapy. I know it's such a taboo subject to certain people on different levels, at least from the standpoint of the way mainstream society portrays it. 
it harps on a lot of the negative aspects of the individual versus on the positive outcomes and how seeking help could help evolve you on a personal level. Instead, it really stops people from ever wanting to seek that help because of the judgments they may, you know, they fear from their peers and colleagues. So I'd like to break down what it means, you know, to me and what it did for me, because I mean, everyone has their own take on things. Um, I feel like therapy is like a double-edged sword. A lot of times people only harp on the negative side, like depression, um, suicidal thoughts, harming, self-harming, um, mental health disorders, such as like schizophrenia and multiple personality disorders. But there's a positive side where therapy really just gives you tools to navigate your life and understand yourself better. Unfortunately, that's not the way it's portrayed. It seems to be, it has to be like a disaster of sorts instead of it being a way to cope and advance and progress yourself so you can live a fulfilled life. Personally, I enjoyed talking to a therapist, someone that's a stranger that really could just look at me from a non judgmental standpoint, analyze my issues, hear me out, and regurgitate them back to me in a way that could positively balance me out. And that's what it's done for me. I'm not saying this is going to work for everybody. Some people prefer to talk to their friends, their family, their church family. Um, go to God. I think all of that, that's great. And that works to some degree, you know, but I personally think that crosses a boundary line for me now. And I think it's immature and very selfish to throw those emotions and feelings on a friend or family member or church member because they're not the professionals that know how to use these skills and put them into play for you. Maybe some of them do um, naturally and may some of them have gotten therapy themselves, but I feel like everyone has their own definition of reality and the way they should live their life. So it's kind of best to find what best works for you. <clears throat> I started therapy, I would say about 2020, late in the year, um, during the pandemic. It was helpful, maybe mid-year, but then it got really heavy, so I decided to take a break. And then in 2021, mid-year, I started again. And all of 2022, I kind of just kept it going because I was really seeing progress in areas of myself that I was really enjoying. Um, but therapy for me gave me the tools I needed to navigate life. And I'm just so grateful for that. I feel like the one thing I learned in therapy about myself, you have to kind of like be open and not fight it. When you really want to grow, you do whatever it takes. Um, I feel like it was, well, I know what the therapist told me. She told me, you have a lack of boundaries and that's for yourself and for others coming into your life. Um, you're a very caring, giving person, but you need to have boundaries in place and stop romanticizing th the potential of people and look at them for who they are and how they're treating you and what it is today in the moment in time and how they're making you feel. And if, you know, you learn when you sit back and take in these things, you decide, how does this make me feel? Because I don't think we give our feelings a chance to just breathe and feel. We don't give that a chance. We kind of suppress them. We distract ourselves constantly with social media and everything else that's going on around us. We don't let ourselves be and feel how we feel. I think we judge our feelings and that's not our place. We are the person that's viewing how we feel in our mind. We are not that person, that voice. We are the person viewing this. And we are. we do have these feelings and it's okay to have all emotions because that's what it means to be human. And I feel like a lot of times we've gotten in such a speed mode of life, got to get this done, got to get that done. We don't do the self-care that we need that will really actually progress us. We're so busy doing. And sometimes doing isn't doing nothing at all and just sitting back and listening to yourself 
giving yourself a chance to breathe, giving yourself to take in everything that happened and not taking it personally. But I learned that these lack of boundaries played in all parts of my life. And it was affecting me on a personal mental level. And it was affecting me on a financial level. It was affecting me on a social level. And I wasn't seeing the bigger picture of why things were happening like this. Um, but then, you know, I think about my personal situations. Like I had a business partner of five years, my former business partner. We worked with the Mad Yum and help started the Elime which is something I started in college, um, but never enacted upon it. And that's where the filming and stuff comes along. But before that, it was just the food and we built and we were we were very close. We had this great platonic relationship at the time. And it just eventually just went south because feelings weren't aligning, emotions were all disarray, and business wasn't being taken care of the way it needed to be taken care of. And that was definitely my own fault because of the lack of boundaries. And, you know, I feel like if I had certain things in place, things the outcome would have been different. But at the same time, I was just feeling drained. And sometimes we have to accept that some relationships in life are just seasons. And the seasons come to an end, so new things can sprout and new beginnings can happen for us. But we hold on to people, places, and things that connect us and make us feel grounded, but it's only really grounded to the past, not necessarily the present moment that we're living. So I felt like that was the major demise and a lot of things that happened between us. Um, but fortunately, we both went our separate ways. and. I'm praying she's doing well, which I'm sure she is, and I'm doing well myself. Um, bringing me to the current, you know, relationship partner I have, business relationship partner, Mark. Um, I think a lot of people, from a public point of view, you know, they've said to me things like, oh, my God, you guys look so great together. You guys should date. Oh, my God, y'all should be a couple. And it's like, for me, that's my best friend. That's one of my best friends. And like, he means the world to me. And we have a great relationship that's not sexual, that's platonic. Just like with my last business partner, it was only platonic. Um, and I think we, as humans, we just always look deeper into things that really don't need to be looked into like that. But I think all that still stems back to the seven pillars of character. Um, every conversation that you have with people doesn't need to be because you're attracted to this person in a sexual way. It could just be you're drawn to their energy, you're drawn to their spirit, um, and you like something about how they make you feel. And that does not mean it needs to translate in a sexual way. Um, this personally has been the discourse in a lot of my platonic relationships and why they failed. Um, one was, like I said, the boundaries, but more so the romanticizing of the potential in someone instead of seeing for them for who they are. And, you know, you can lose a lot of time with people that really aren't meant to be in your life. Um, the past three years was definitely a huge purge and turnaround that I did not see coming and was very hard for me on a mental, spiritual level because I didn't think I was ready to let go. but my heart was ready to let go. My mind necessarily wasn't. We hold on to memories so hard. But, you know, there's greater things that are coming for all of us in our future and our present if we tune in to it and not worry about the past because it, it has no weight here unless you give it that personally. Um, also, like, I think with, like, creative partners and you know, what I did with music and film, sometimes things really went disarray and did not work out because there was some type of sexual chemistry underlining it. But I'm not the type of person to want to cross those boundaries with anyone. Um, and that's just me. It works best for me. I think that I'm okay with having great work relationships with creative people without exploring that side of things with them. Because at the end of the day, I was drawn to them for their talent and for their skill, um, but not on a sexual level. It was just the talent and the skill for me. And I think that can cause 
like a rupture in energies if someone's not if the other individual's not on the same page or mature enough to see it like that um this was embedded in me from a young age by my mother with you know the pillars seven pillars of character and just making sure that you know you build great relations with the people around you so they know your character and you know say for example something terrible happens and you know it gets you get involved with the police and some crazy crime you will have people vouching for your character and be like, that's not the person I know. They would not do anything like that. Um, you would have people knowing about your whereabouts that can stand up for you and back you up. So that's why these things are super important for me on a personal level outside of what's in my bank account, what other people see me as when they look at me, um, how they how people will try to define me by my sexuality and not even pay attention to my skill. But then you, I have to look at it and be like, hey, that's their mindset. That doesn't have to be mine. So you have to learn to pick and choose. Um, I feel like a lot of times growing up, growing up, um, I wasn't the most attractive person. It took me a while to grow into my looks. I would say my mid to late 20s and was when I really started developing physically. Um, and I think that's when the treatment of the everyday person started to change. And I noticed it, but what didn't change with me was my character. So it was for me building a bigger, better package than the people around me in hopes that they would aspire higher within themselves. But, you know, sometimes society, people, we're, we're shallow at times. You know, what glistens and isn't always gold. And I think that's something that we all have to learn our, on our own through maturity. Um, but I will say now that I'm like in a different place in my life, I could look at things a little bit differently because up to this point, I've never had any sexual relations with anyone that I've done anything creative with. It's really just been what we created together. And um, that's something I'm very grateful for. I didn't want to cross those boundaries. And for me, it kept things simple. Instead of bringing sex can complicate things, you get emotions involved. And sometimes you don't even have to have sex. And those emotions are already wrong because you're not on the same page as the other person and someone may be seeking something more that you may not be seeking and that can change the dynamic of the relationship um but i think now being older i'm more mature if i was working on a creative project with like a producer filmmaker um writer someone of the sort i think if we both had this mutual attraction for each other, I may be open to stepping and crossing that boundary if we both agree, as long as those seven pillars of character are in place and I've gotten to know, know this individual for who they really are. And then sex is really the icing on the cake. It's bringing, you know, the mind and the body together in the most beautiful way. And those are the type of relationships I think last forever and mean something to someone for a lifetime. But to wrap things up on the seven pillars of character and, you know, this platonic relationship talk, I will say when you take your last breath and life's flashing before your eyes, this is the time you get to bear witness to the marks on the lives of the people that you came across. Um, so I think that's going to be more important than what was in the bank when, you know, you're six feet under and, you know, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. But that is all I have for you guys today. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, please feel free to share any thoughts, um, opinions, experiences of your own with me. Um, I'll definitely get back to you. But yeah, that wraps our now first episode of At Least Digest. And I appreciate you guys. And I hope to hear from you soon. Love you very much. Have a wonderful day.